Okay, this is Love Letter, Legend of the Five Rings edition. Uh, we're not going to talk too extensively about how it works because Love Letter is a pretty popular game. A lot of people have made uh, coverage for it up to this point. But I wanted to kind of make a video just to show you what you get when you get this specific edition of Love Letter. It comes in its own little bag inside of the box, which has this, uh, I assume, Legend of the Five Rings logo thing on the back. So it's got that if you care about the Legend of the Five Rings uh, universe. Um, and then you've got uh, cubes that are the same as uh, AG's normal Love Letter edition. Uh, you got your rules, which goes into strange in-depth uh, backstory on all of the characters in the game. So you've got that if you really want, like half of this manual is just backstory on the characters that come with the game. So. It's got that. Um, and you've got your uh, four player aid cards to tell you how many cards are in the game. And then you've got your characters, which, um, you know, they've got character specific names like Kayu Akeme, the diplomat, um, or Matsu Misato, the Hatamoto, um, Doji Takato the manipulator, Isawa Tenkawa, the Shugenja. Um, so you go through this and this is just kind of the thing you should take note if you're interested in this specific edition is that you're going to have characters that have these kind of less than uh, familiar titles for, um, I guess, an American audience. Um, Shosuro Yamazaki, the courtier. Um, it could be a bit problematic if you're concerned about um, the entry level uh, nature of the game um, people are trying to recall what action does what and you're trying to explain that to them you're like well a guard does this you play a guard and they um, can guess the role of someone else's card um, but then you try to explain what the Hatamoto does, or what the Manipulator does, or what the Sensei does. And they'll be like, oh, what was that again? Um, so, you know, that's just a thing to be aware of with this game. Um, when we're playing, hopefully you'll be able to see uh, the artwork and what that looks like. It's pretty nice artwork. The card stock is pretty good. Um, in case you have not played Love Letter and you think I'm just rambling right now, I will give you a very brief explanation of what happens. You take these 16 cards, you shuffle them together, you remove one randomly and no one gets to see what it is, and then you deal one card to each player. That's your secret role and you have that. On your turn, you're going to draw a second card and of your two cards, you're going to play one of them. Um, and all cards have a thing that they do, like if I played my Courtier, it lets me look at another player's hand. Or if I played my Hatamoto, I would choose another, uh, I would choose any player, including myself, to discard their hand and draw a new card. So you have uh, numbers that range from 1 to 8, um, and some cards uh, by nature are trying to eliminate other players from the game. They'll, like I said, the guard, you would play it and you'd try to guess what someone else's number is. Um, and you go through drawing cards like that and some people get eliminated from the round. And if at the end of the round, once you've gone through all the cards, if people are still in the game, you just compare numbers and whoever has the highest number wins that round. They get to take a cube. Uh, which I guess is a love letter or a piece of the princess's affection. Um, and you play a number of rounds, theoretically according to the number of players playing the game. Uh, I generally play it just kind of saying, play it until you don't want to play anymore and just whoever wins, wins. Um, typically that's like somewhere between three to five rounds. Um, but I do know like the two player game, it tells you to play seven rounds or play till someone gets seven cubes, which is longer than the game really should last. So, um, this is one of those games where you might want to kind of ignore what the rules say about how, when the game ends and just play until people, it looks like people are just like, yeah, I'm done with it. That's fine. And that's that. Uh, 
remember at the start of every round to uh, shuffle the cards and remove one and don't let anyone see what it is because that um, helps to keep people guessing about exactly what cards are in the game. That's important. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty basic um, deduction game uh, with hidden rolls and all that. So we're going to show you a game real quick, and then we'll talk about it afterward. I'm going first. I'm going to draw a card. Okay. I have to play one of these two cards. Uh, I'm going to play Kayu Akeme, a diplomat. Myself and another player have to secretly compare hands. Player with the lower number is out of the rounds. Bye. <laughs> Then you wanna, then you wanna, okay, yeah, you're out of the round. Uh, we reveal that he was that, that's discarded, so you know that's out. I was a guard. And that's that. You know that my card is higher than a one. Yeah, useful knowledge. Very. So I discard what I don't want? You dis. you play one card. The lens cap is on if you were trying to do something with that. I figured I might as well. <laughs> do something since you're out of the round? Yep. Get some sweet close-ups. Yeah. It'll be dynamic. Mm -hmm. Alright. I'm gonna play the diplomat, and I'm gonna... The microphone's also off. We can compare cards with you. We compare hands. Oh, those? Yeah. So you look at your hands, and whoever has the lower number is out. Why did you do that? <laughs> assume you are out of the rounds. <laughs> do you have, like, a guard? Yes! <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, well, you got eliminated, and we'll talk about it in a second. Um, what you probably would have wanted to do is play the guard and um, you try to guess what card either of us had in our hand, but you had like no information to go off of, so you didn't really have a lot of options, but at least you were not 100% guaranteed to lose <laughs> playing the guard. Shoot again, Chuck. Until your next turn, ignore all effects from other players' cards. Oh! Sure. So I draw a card, and I just have to discard a thing because um, I can't do anything else. Um, <laughs> well, okay. Um, Togashi Gozato, the sensei. If I have this card and the manipulator or Hatamoto in my hand, I have to discard the sensei. So that happens. But does he have that card in his hand, or is he bluffing? Is it a bluff, Bonnie? We don't know! So it's and I feel like Bonnie so doesn't care either, because she's out of the round. <laughs> <laughs> but... Hatamoto. You have to discard your hand and draw a new card. Uh-oh. Well, I lose, because I discard the princess. Okay. <laughs> so there is bluffing, too. Yes. Woo! Love letter! Love letter. Yep. Can we play one more round? Well, we can yeah, play we'll at least play one more round so that you don't do that again. <laughs> Shut up, Joshua. And the card that was out was a guard. There's five guards. You could have had one. I... But then you still wouldn't have done anything. <laughs> you needed to be at least a two if you were going to get rid of him. Gosh, I'm so dumb tonight. It was a really weird choice. <laughs> Show you my agent card. And... But it's fine, because now you understand like yeah. what is going on with that. Like, about it. Okay. Typically, like the reason why there's so many guards is you'd use a guard and kind of like guess what someone is, and maybe you'll get it right. And, you know. I like how the cubes are the same color as your um, table. Yeah, really handy. Yeah, right? it shows up, I'm trying to show up real good on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, or easy for you to see. Remove from the game. Do, do, do. And you go first. Okay. Because you won. Okay. Oh, let's see if I can get eliminated before I get an action. We can try for that if you'd like. Oh! Do you have a guard? Wait, wait, wait. Is it, are you allowed to guess guard? Oh, no, I'm not. Well, you're Sorry. Okay, I didn't realize so, that. Well, I mean... I, I should have. But. Do you want a new card, Rob, since we know That's that... okay. I'm just discard, to... just yeah. discard your guard. That happens a lot with this game. Or it does happen this a thing, lot. Oh, you can't actually... Do, oh, now there's things ruined. People do that a lot. But, yeah. but it's short and no one cares. It's yeah. like coup and someone messes up coup. It's like, whatever. Yeah. I'm just, just finish playing coup. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. 
I bet you have a guard. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, you know what, Bonnie? I think you're a princess. What do I do if he does that? Do you, are you a princess? If you have a princess, then you lose. You lose if you have the princess. Oh, because they're playing your guard? Yeah. I am not the princess. I just want to say that because you're a princess. Oh. Right. <laughs> Going to Shosuru Yamazaki and look at your hand. <gasps> Is Josh a princess? <laughs> <laughs> so that's your turn? I just don't know how to answer that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna Shosuru guy and. I'm look at Josh's hand. Okay, so you're looking at Josh's hand, too. Is Josh a princess? <laughs> Are you a princess? I am. He's a pretty, pretty princess. I am a pretty, pretty princess. I was just trying to throw everybody off the bait, off the uh, scent by accusing Bonnie of having the princess. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Is it a bluff? Oh no, we don't know. <laughs> Sensei! You know what? I am just gonna ignore anything that happens until the start of my next turn. Screw you guys. Leave me alone. I guess that Bonnie is a uh, diplomat. You're a diplomat. You're out. You've been eliminated. Boo. No turn for you. Why did you do that? So that I couldn't play him. Yeah. And I know what he is. Uh, okay. But if you knew what he is, why didn't you? Because he has other plans for eliminating me. Are you a manipulator? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I am, in fact, a manipulator. Yeah. I am Doji Kitako Tipo. Wait, is Josh a princess? I don't know. I don't know, maybe he's someone under the bag. Are you a princess? Diplomat. Oh, am I a diplomat? You exchange hands. I am oh. playing diplomat. We compare hands. Yeah, you suck. Lower hands is out. Oh, well, I guess I'm out, right? Yeah, okay. Bye. You just earned yourself a second maroon cube. Josh is a princess, you guys. Yep. He was a princess all along. You guys just said something. I could have eliminated him. Why didn't you help a brother out? Both of the cards in my hand had the power to eliminate him. What was out? Um, a four? No, a five. That's love letter. That is love letter. Yeah. You can play it for as long as you want to. Until you run out of cubes. Well, I mean, you could keep playing love letter. You just... But stop using the cubes. Or just don't use the cubes at all and count to three. <laughs> Whatever. Uh... Does it just go to three? Is that what the, like, standard Yeah, I is? think so. Like, cause, because, like, it kind of reminds me of the mechanics, even though it's not the same game as Masquerade a little bit. I mean, it's very similar to Masquerade or Cube. Yeah. It's like the super simple version of them. Most of this rulebook is the backstory for all the characters. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's nice that somebody put the thought uh, into it. Based on the number of players, four tokens. Mm. If you're playing two players, you play to seven. Ooh. Yeah, it's real fun. Uh, you would start again yeah, because you won. Uh -huh. I'm going to look at Bonnie's hand. Uh-oh. Find a 
the princess? Yes. He raised his eyebrows at me. Let's see. Um, I'm going to make Bonnie discard her hand and draw a new one so that Josh has no information. Oh, it was a sensei. I'm sorry. Do you have a Shugenja? What's that? Four. <laughs> no, I don't have a four. It's <coughs> your turn, Bonds. I'm gonna look at Rob's hand. Oh! It's not a Shugenja. <laughs> it's true. It isn't a Shugenja. I'm going to guess that Rob has a Hatemoto. That number is Hatemoto. Five. Five. No, I don't have a Hatemoto. <laughs> <coughs> you guys. All your... I... I think that Josh is a Shugenja. Four. No? Dang it. Sorry. Hmm? It's Bar. Here. Oh, okay. It's like, your card got removed. I'm just shenanigans. You know what I am? A Shugenja. Oh! Could have eliminated you. What's that do? It means no one can do anything to me until it's my turn again. He's immune. Oh. I am going to guess that Rob is the princess. Oh, I'm a princess. Good job. Pretty, pretty princess. Rob is out. I'm gonna guess that Bonnie's the manipulator. Rongo, Dongo. Is that a way of saying people are wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shugenja. Alright, who has the highest number? Six. Six. <sighs> Good job! Yep. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> okay, now we're done. <laughs> <laughs> You just want to take away my princess dreams, Bonnie? I did. You just want to play one round where you didn't get eliminated within a couple turns. You're a monster. Well, I, I hate when you it. start with the princess and you're like, well, well... Everything I take, I have to play. Yep, whatever I draw, that's the card that I'm putting down. What I hate is when you start with the princess and two people look at your hand within the first turn. Ooh. <laughs> And you still win? And I still they, win like, because <laughs> I happen to draw exactly the right cards to make that happen. <laughs> You're a monster. Anyway, that's Love Letter. It's Legend of the Five Rings. Love, love letter. letter! There's not much to say because, I mean... It's Love Letter. It's Love Letter and you've probably played it or at least know a fair amount about it. Um. Yeah, I think Love Letter has more exposure than... Any, a lot of games. Any game we've talked about up to this point, yeah. um, it's pretty common now. And, you know, if you happen to have never heard of it and you saw this video, and now you know what Love Letter is. And sorry that we have this kind of cavalier attitude about talking about <laughs> Love Letter and are not giving it its due diligence. Um, but there are just 
lots of people out there who have already covered Love Letter to a great extent. So And uh, lots of different versions of Love Letter. Yeah. Um, um, so really the only reason we did this was A, we were getting rid of it, and B, we wanted to um, show people what this version looks like so that if they are... In the market, they can making find a, copy a they difficult like. decision yeah. between basic love letter with the uh, Victorian mm-hmm. theme. Victorian is that what you'd call yeah, it? Yeah, probably. Um, or you know, Legend of the Five Rings love letter with or its Batman or Batman <laughs> or The Hobbit or any of the others. Like there are a lot. Adventure Time, you yeah. know, like there are lots of love letters out there. This one is. Asian themed. Um, How do you feel this compares? It's the same game. Oh, I mean, like artwork wise, since that's the only real difference, except for Batman has like a different mechanic. But uh, I think it's equivalent to the basic one. Like, it's not better or worse. I guess I should be like the original love letter the japanese one mm-hmm. is actually a different artwork and that's I keep, true i keep referring it to the original love letter our like the original love letter we got in america uh ag's love letter yeah. was this um kind of victorian a kind of victorian one yeah so it's comparable to that one in art style and quality of cards and everything mm-hmm. like there's not really any kind of there's nothing wrong with it i also don't feel like it has any strong advantage to it i almost it's weird because I would have preferred this theme-wise over the other love letter because mm-hmm. I don't really care about princes and princesses and, yeah, you know. Sure. Um, but this one falls short for me because of the weird names of the character roles and it's just a slight stumbling block when love letter is designed to be a game that you play with people who don't know games or you want something that's really fast and I think that little bit of excess in trying to make it match the legend of the five rings universe which i know nothing about Mm -hmm. makes it kind of um just slightly less accessible than sure i agree with that love letter um comparative to the actual original version of love letter i prefer this art um and they're both kind of asiany looking i don't yeah. i don't want to say like you know they're just they're asian but like they're both it's it's a very yeah they, they have like that asian flavor in their art style sure yeah that makes sense to me um but yeah like i it's love letter yeah that's yeah. about like all i can say about it. Let me how do you i guess since we're talking about love letter and we probably aren't gonna make another video about love letter I, how do you I feel like it. love letter compares to other kind of bluffing deduction games in that genre. I don't... I've never personally felt like it has a strong element of bluffing. Um, You kind of just have two cards and you deal with them. Yeah. And since everybody has the same goal of wanting the highest card possible, and there's not that many cards in the game, it's not terribly um, deep in terms of complexity. Um And that's the whole point. Love Letter exists for... People who don't play games. Yeah, but but also can be played with people who do play games, and you'll still be okay with it. Yeah. I go to game nights all the time where people are new and like, well, we'll play Love Letter. And even when we did the video for this, the two people we played with who are gamers had never played Love Letter. Um, So, you know, it's, it's got a... I would consider it a mainstay in anyone's collection just because it's a thing you can pull out anytime with any group of people. No one's going to be offended by it. It's Mm -hmm. really simple. Sure. And I would assume that most people enjoy it for the most part. Like, I guess really serious gamers probably just don't care. Like, yeah, I'm, I mostly don't care. Like I'm mostly at that point, like too. like in our game, you know, I got eliminated before I even took a turn one of the times, and then before I took like a second turn one of the other rounds, you know, I'm just kind of like okay, whatever. I mean, that's the way Love Letter plays. That yeah. you get a card, and then somebody eliminates you, and you can't do anything about it. So. But that's you know that's how I feel about Coup as well. Sure, I would rather play Love Letter than Coup because it's shorter and. 
tighter. A bit less, I would say it's a bit less uh, vindictive almost. Mm, sure. Ku is kind of built on this, okay, I need to like calculate who I think is most likely to win and shut them down. Sure. And this doesn't seem to be quite that way. It's more of trying to manipulate the cards so you end up with the best card. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'd agree with that. So, yeah, like, I think that given the choice, like, because they're both introductory games, basically, Coup is harder to teach people because it's a bit harder to wrap your brain around what's happening with all of the... You have to explain all the roles and explain actions and do this and that, and you can do this, but you don't have to be this to do this. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is, you do whatever it is on your card. Yeah. You just, that's it. Um, it's more limited, but at the same time... It works better, I think, and is less likely to make people upset. Okay, I think um, that's fair. So I recommend Love Letter to people if they don't have any clue about games. That's fine. Um, mm -hmm. I even, you know, even people who do play games, if they haven't played it, I think they should play it at least once. Um, and as m many people point out, it's you know portable. It comes in a bag, so you just carry the bag around and yeah. you can it's really yeah it's really easy stand in line and play it you don't have to be sitting at a table or anything so yeah. it's got that going for it sure uh, do you want to rate it like i don't even know like we rated it whenever we first played it years ago and i wouldn't even know what that rating is yeah hey. i mean for what it is it's really good uh-huh but compared to other games like it, it would be way down on my list of games that I would choose to play. I'd give it like a 6.25, I guess. Okay, yeah, that seems fair. It's like a balance between... Like, for what it is, it's like an 8, almost, right? I guess, but like, for me, like, wanting to play it... For like, me wanting to play it, like, it'd be like a 5, maybe lower than that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I, I think that's probably a fair place to put it for the way you and I rate games. If... Yeah, if we were much newer to gaming, uh, if I were making a different scale for people who are newer to gaming, I'd say it's like an 8. Yeah. It's like, you should probably check this out because it's super cheap. Yeah. And portable and does a lot of things right. Yeah, I agree. For people who have, you know, hundreds of games, it's not nearly as essential and it's just kind of like a thing you can have. It doesn't take up any space, so you can have it and... Pull it out when you need it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's Love Letter, Legend of the Five Rings edition. And hopefully that is interesting to you. I was just checking to see if you are, in fact, still writing a love letter to the princess in this mm. version of the game. You are. But there's, like, talking about this backstory of, like, the princess's arranged marriage and you need to, like, you'll get, you're going to get political glory, but wouldn't it be better if you influence the decision by winning the heart of the princess herself? And it's like, all right, I guess that's... Yeah, I don't know. The theme. <laughs>